No more, Mr. Nice Guy. That's what Jose Aldo is going to be saying tonight. No more. No more, Mr. Nice Guy from Rio de Janeiro. Welcome to the block. Welcome to the block. I am your host, Kyle Johnston. Find my work on Twitter, like usual. At KJ underscore the block. On my blog site, Kyle Johnson the block dot wordpress dot com. This is the block. This is for the late night addicts, early morning coffee drinkers. It's where you break down some sports, we handicap some sports, talk a little pop culture. And of course, I provide you with some uh, much needed music in our lives. So we got a big UFC card tonight. Jose Aldo. I'm going to be uh, sitting in his corner tonight. I'm looking forward to a, a good night of fights. It's actually a pretty damn good card. Wide Mid and Rockhold, co-main event. I got some sports picks for you. They'll talk a little UFC. I'll tell you who I'm on in the big fight tonight. As you can probably tell though. But I'll have some information for you a little bit later in the show. But the uh, the big news, obviously, is Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, like usual, stealing the show. Him and the Irish fans. And I know all about the Irish fans. So right now, basically, a bunch of Irish fans, not once, but twice, rerouted a plane back to JFK. I guess the first time, they were trying to take off. They were on the, uh, the runway, the tarmac. And they were... Uh, and they were, uh, they were going through all the safety procedures, like usual. You know, the stewardess. The stewards, you know, going through the uh, safety procedures. And I guess every time the, uh, the one lady tried to uh, talk about the life vests, one Irish fellow started getting in a ole, 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 ole. Basically interrupting her every time. Basically interrupting her every, every time. Then I guess they turned around, called security, kicked this guy off. Guess he was saying, Ogie, Ogie, Ogie as well, eh? Yes, yeah, typical Irish. Ole, Ole, Ole. Ogie, Ogie, Ogie. Yeah, pretty, pretty typical. I, I'll tell you some stories about the Irish here coming up. I'll just, uh, I'm setting this up. I'm going some there. I'm going some here with this. So they kick him off. They eventually get going. They say, uh, this one guy I wrote, about 25 minutes into the flight, two other Irish lads started kicking off at each other. And I guess just when, uh, just when they think that they calm the situation down, just when they think they calm the situation down, the rest of the plane's shouting at them to sit down. I guess one of the Irish fellows reached over and uh, probably gave him a cheeky, probably gave him one of those cheeky little uh, Irish slaps, gave him a few slaps, and that basically kicked it all off. Flight crew got pissed off. They separated them, turned the flight back around. People pissed off. These guys are probably going to miss the fight anyways. Now they're going to spend a night in jail, probably. But anyways, I was at Euro 2012. I know all about the Irish. Spent about, what, almost a week in Poznan? 
maybe about four days in Poznan, sorry. Spent about four days or so in Poznan. And um, that was basically the home base of the Irish. Home base of the Irish. But 20, 30,000 Irish supporters probably in uh, Poland. Now, the Irish didn't win a game, didn't score a goal. I, I saw Italy, Ireland. Went to the Irish to the went with the Irish to the stadium, but uh, before that, like there was probably uh, maybe about fifteen thousand people. I'd say Irish in this uh, in Poznan. Poznan's about what two hundred fifty thousand pop population. So uh, fifteen thousand Irish, two hundred fifty thousand population. It, it, it was the party, man. All the Polish wanted to be like the Irish. They all wanted stuff like uh, all the Irish flags. They wanted anything to do with uh, Ireland. Um, we were basically crowd surfing the Polish girls or any girls up to the, cause like the fucking, it was just one big fucking bar. Like the fucking square was just fucking packed. Cause like in Europe, you know, they usually got the squares and the fucking bar and you got the main square and most of the better bars are all around it. And they all got like patios and stuff like that. They reach out into the main square. So that basically just filled up and you just fucking walked around with your drink. Crowd surfing girls to the front to dance. We we're, uh. Basically took over all the statues. I got many photos. Lost my voice many a times chanting. Many free drinks too. C couldn't complain. Had to uh had had to tap out in a few games of Kings because basically all all the Irish do in Kings. I don't know if you ever played the card game Kings. All they do is chug their drinks. It's basically it. Every rule is fucking chug. So uh yeah, you, you usually don't last too fucking long. It's either a shot or a fucking drink. Sometimes both. But, um, good fucking times. Like, we were taking the tram up to the stadium. And basically, the Irish just took it. They took the city over. There was no violence. No violence at all. Fucking cops loved them. Like, we were, we had, uh, the Irish co uh, fucking cops dancing with us. Like, uh, there was no violence. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, Poznan and the Irish were all over the Poland's, like, CNN. Their government news channel. It was pretty fucking wild. We were watching ourselves every fucking morning. After every party, we'd wake up fucking hungover, and we'd watch ourselves in the morning while we ate breakfast at the fucking hostel. It was fucking hilarious. We could see ourselves on TV. It was it was just amazing. Amazing time. But they took the tram over when we were up going to, going up to the stadium, and fucking uh. Basically, they told the tram driver, it, it was so, so fucking packed. Like, like, we could barely get anybody in. We were just fucking rocking it, chanting, stomping. Like, I, I really thought the thing was going to tip over, to be honest with you. But the, the driver couldn't stop. So we just told him to slow down at every stop. And every time we saw, like, an Irish fellow, they'd fucking yell out, you going to the match? And if he replied yes, basically this big, huge fucking guy, man, his fucking chest was massive. He's a fucking big Irish lad. He'd just reach out and fucking scoop him up, man. It was fucking hilarious. And there was another guy in the middle. If they had a buddy with him, they'd scoop the other buddy up. It was fucking hilarious, man. But, um, great times at the game. They lost to Italy, which kind of sucked. We definitely turned on the Italian fans. We were cheering for Croatia. We needed Croatia to beat Spain. And we needed... So, uh... Yeah, so we started chanting a whole bunch of things about Croatia towards Italians. Started chanting lots of shit about fucking match-fixing towards the Italians. It was a fucking good time. The, the stadium was basically 75% Irish anyway. So it was a fucking party up there. <clears throat> fucking beers. <laughs> Had more beers than usual at a, at, at a soccer match. Put it that way. Fucking Viva, what was that? Uh, Trapattoni, Trapattoni. He used to be Italian, but he's Irish now. No, was it? Whoa, Trapattoni. Whoa, Trapattoni. He used to be Italian, but he's Irish now. Whoa, Trapattoni. Whoa, Trapattoni. He used to be Italian, but he's Irish now. Fucking good times, man. Bring back good memories. So I know all about what's going down in Vegas with the Irish. Taking over uh, Vegas. It's going to be a fucking madhouse tonight. There's going to be fights. Because, like, it, it's different in America. You know what I mean? It's different. You know, like, over in Europe, they're fucking way more. They, they, they fucking... They, they, 
the pol the Polish population wanted to learn the Irish culture and be like them. Like it was, they were totally accepted. They were allowed to get away with some some drunken antics, but there was no violence at all because there was no um, we say there was no authority like enforcing the violence or enforcing a fucking unruly confrontation. You know what I mean? They 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 settled it like fucking human beings. You know, instead of taking them to the slammer, they took them back home. It, it, it was a good time. So, but we might see some shit go down. But uh, there's going to be a good time. Gonna be a good time. Getting the match. I shouldn't say match. I'm actually watching the uh, City Swansea game, and I got the West Ham Stoke game on. I got a parlay in this. I got West Ham Stoke under two and a half goals. We're at nil-nil right now in the 88th minute. And I need uh, Man City to win to cash this parlay. They're up 1-0 in the 88th minute as well. And looks like Joe Hart just tipped the ball off the top of the bar. Fuck. Come on, City. Don't fucking ruin this. I can't believe I'm saying this for a bet. I'm only saying this because I do think United is going to take care of business in, uh, in Burnmouth, in Burnmouth today. I really do. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna. They'll, they'll step up. They have to. Louis Van Gaal has to. He has to take the reins off them. I almost bet the over in that game, but I do have United to win against Burnmouth. Got them at what plus one thirty? Kind of a yeah. <clears throat> we'll we'll fucking ride it. We'll ride it. We'll sweat it out. We're probably gonna have to sweat it out. But I'm looking for Burnmouth to uh, have a letdown match. They beat Chelsea last week. You know what I mean? They beat the fucking defending champs. Usually these small clubs have a letdown after that. But I don't want to get too far away from this uh, UFC. I'll uh, segue my UFC picks actually for you. Might as well. You might as well. We also got the Euro draw coming up to later today as well. Very interesting. I'm also... Uh, Considering going to Paris this spring, depending what my internship options are. Like, I'm working on a couple things right now. I might have some news for you in the coming weeks. But uh, depending what my intern options are in the spring, I might I might head down to France and uh, check out the Euros. So, uh, you know, I kind of got that half, half planned out right now. Got some hostels picked out. Got some games kind of circled. Um... Probably buy some scalpers. I'll probably go that route and get my tickets because it was cheaper. I went to Euro 2012 and I bought a few uh, few scalper tickets and they were much cheaper than buying them online. Much safer too. <laughs> much fucking safer dealing with someone fucking mano a mano. But basically, we're going to cash this fucking under. We're going to cash this under in the West Ham Stoke. We just need City to pull through. Fuck! But good! Like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, fuck, but yes! Like, I'm a, I'm a United supporter, so, Swansea just scored, Gomez, Gomez just blasted it by heart on the short side, ran down the right wing, out-muscled the defender, created a little space, blasted it short side, Hart got his fingertips on it, but couldn't keep it out, too much pace on the ball, but, but yes, but fuck! Like, this is the world of, of being a handicapper, folks, and, and, and a sports lover. Like, this is great for United. Like, hopefully we can pull out three points and create a little gap here. We're coming into this coming into this match week tied with City on 29 points. We're in fourth. City's in third. Arsenal's on 30 or 31 in second. And then, obviously, Leicester's in first. The old Foxes. Foxes of Leicester in first. But, like, right on, Gomez. Right on, Gomez. Like, I... Like, you know, uh, fuck it. I'll, I'll forfeit the cash for for a little. Uh, like this, my heart lays with United, so it, it, it's worth it's worth more. It's worth way more than whatever this little uh, currency shit is that we we run our world on. But anyways, come on, Swansea. Like my, I have it totally changed, right? Like, and Yaya Toure just tied it. Uh, just uh, put City in the lead. Looks like it was a deflected shot, looped over. The keeper, uh, who, who'd be in that? Um, the former Arsenal keeper. The Polish dude, Fabianski. Looks like he, uh, he took the ball, cut in from the uh, right wing, inside the box. and Yeah, definitely took a deflection. 
So he came down the right wing, cut inside the corner of the 18-yard box, cut back onto his left foot. Strike took a deflection off the defender and looped over Fabianski into the far corner. He was stretched out, man, the keeper, but there's nothing he could do. Like, fuck! Like, my emotions are going wild right now. Like, holy shit! Like, fuck! But yes, now my, now my, now now the bet's back on, right? So, like, I guess it's a, uh, it's somewhat of a win-win situation. Even though I'd rather see United go ahead of City. Because I fucking can't stand City. If anybody knows me, can't stand the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hate the Toronto Maple Leafs. I hate Manchester City. I hate Liverpool. You know, like I'm, I, you know, I got my sport. I'm, I, I got, I support my teams. I got my rivals. You know, I know hate's a strong word, but that's the beauty thing about sports is like, like I don't hate people. You know, I generally like helping people. I always do, and I wouldn't say I hate people. That's real strong towards people. But in sports, the lovely thing about sports, you can have a love and hate relationship. Because it's sports. It's not hurting anybody. So when I say I hate the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, come on. I just, I just fucking hate them. I dislike them. When I hate City, just dislike them. You know? Doesn't mean I won't put money on them or wager. But anyway, sorry about that. Kind of got distracted from where I was going on this with the UFC. Just kind of want to watch this. Game's winding down. There's about 30 seconds left in the uh, City Swansea match. But anyways, Aldo and McGregor, UFC tonight. So we're going to see uh, the, the power, size, and strength of McGregor. The intensity of McGregor going up against the patient, skill, precision of Aldo. Now Aldo hasn't fought in over a year. As we know, they were supposed to fight in July. Aldo pulled out because he broke his ribs. And that's why all this controversy about champion and intern champ. And the interim champion all came about when McGregor and Mendez fought. Or when White scheduled McGregor and Mendez. But anyways. And, uh, and the speed of Aldo. I think the speed and the precision and the patience of Aldo is going to get us through this. I think it's going to be a long battle. I don't think we're going to see no knockouts in the first couple rounds. These guys both got hard chins. But McGregor sticks his chin out there. He's been tagged a couple times. We've seen him. We've seen him cut. We've seen him tagged. It only takes one shot. One shot. So I'll get into some of my plays here. So we'll start with the main event. Jose Aldo. The champion. Versus the intern champion, Conor McGregor. We've seen a lot of money coming in on Jose Aldo lately. Yesterday around this time, Jose Aldo was what? Plus 110? Was it? Yeah, Friday. Friday ran around this time, Jose Aldo was plus 110. Now we're seeing him at minus 125, so we're seeing a lot of money coming in on Aldo. Maybe it's because of the weigh-ins. We saw McGregor kind of give a fake kick to Aldo and saw some antics there. Maybe people are remembering the Ronda Rousey situation when she kind of blew up on Holly Holmes. And Holly Holmes proceeded to kick her ass. So all those minus 125 right now as it stands. Conor McGregor is the underdog as it stands at plus 100. I got some cash on Jose Aldo at minus 125. That's who I'm going to be taking in this uh, championship fight. Now in the cold main event, Weidman and Rockhold. I'm not going to really uh, drink the Kool-Aid of the hype of Rockhold too quick. I think he's a good fighter. But I'm going to take Chris Weidman at minus 143 to win this fight. I think the patience and the skill of the champion is going to come through here. The ground game. I think we're going to see some mean ground and pound by Weidman. I'm going to parlay Weidman at minus 143. I'm going to parlay him up with Max Hallowell. He's an up-and-comer. He's a riser in the industry. He's facing Jeremy Stevens, who's basically a grizzled vet right now. He's had a lot of time spent in the cage. So I look for Max Holloway to make quick work of Jeremy Stevens, to be honest with you. So I'm going to parlay Max Holloway up with uh, 
Chris Weidman at minus 143. Now, after a quiet night on the hard court, so it looks like City pulled through. City won that. Sorry about sorry. I'll get to the hard court in a second here. It looks like City pulled through. Looks like they had a pulled pulled off a two one victory. Snagged a late one. Actually, both both clubs traded goals late. To be honest with you, in the last five minutes of the match, but City pulled through the two one victory. 2-1 victory for City, and it looks like United Stoke drew nil-nil. So you can cash that parlay. It's a good good way to start the day off. Good way to start the day off. Told my friend in class on Friday, you know, I have been getting a little bit better sleep lately, so I woke up all giddy Friday. Kind of felt bad for her because we fucked up our project. You know, we were working together. Felt fucking real bad. But it, it was an honest mistake. You know, we tried. But, like, she had to do a presentation, and she hates doing them. And I just felt so fucking helpless, to be honest with you. Like, she she just, she was scrolling up and down her page, and she was just hesitating. And I just, you know, I was just like, just, 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 just do it. Just, who cares? Go for it. Just go for it. Give, give the prof what she, tell the prof what she wants to hear. And, um, yeah, I just felt hopeless and bad. But, ah, she's a fucking tough girl. She'll pull through. She'll pull through. I know she will. But I woke up giddy again this morning. You know, I like the board. I like the board. So we can cash that. It's a great way. Great way to start the day. But anyways. Alright, on to the hard court. Go a little NCAA action for you. We got some early games. We got some late games. For you degenerates. Remember, you can find... My work on Twitter at KJ underscore the block. Find it on my blog site, Kyle Johnson the block dot wordpress dot com. All right. So the first game going off on the board today that I got that kind of caught my eye. Marquette's on the road in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's laying seven. The over-under in this game is 136 and a half. I like the Marquette Golden Eagles at plus seven. I actually got him at plus seven and a half about 45 minutes ago. So if you like Marquette, we're starting to see some money, some movement on the line. So jump on him. Marquette's four and four against the spread on the season. Wisconsin's three and seven. Now a couple of these trends kind of go against us here. But it's a new season. It's a new season. Marquette's two and six straight up last eight games. On the road against Wisconsin. Marquette's also 2-4 and four against the spread in the last 6 on the road. But Wisconsin's 2-6 and six against the spread in their last 8 games. So something's got to give here. Something's got to give. Wisconsin's also 1-4 and four against the spread in their last 5 when playing Marquette. So we're going we're gonna to hope, hope that last trend. We're going to ride that. Marquette's been putting points up this year. Late 80 on San Jose State, but San Jose State's garbage. They played a f they played some garbage teams. Grambling State, Maine, San Jose State. But they but they laid 78 at Arizona State. Taking home the win. Covered two. They were laying four, one by five. Wisconsin? Wisconsin's Wisconsin. They're gonna slow this game down. They're gonna slow this game down. Which is going to bode well for a team that can put some points up. So I think Marquette's going to be able to hang in this. They might even take the win. So we're going to take Marquette at plus 7.5. Also going off the board early is Georgia State and Old Dominion.
Georgia State are minus two favorites. The over-under in this game is 119 and a half. We're going to ride the Georgia State Panthers to victory at minus two. We're going to lay the points. You know, both these teams, you know, both these teams are what they are. They're not very good. They're not very good. They're good. It's going to be tough for either of these teams to make the tournament. Georgia State's 1-3, sorry. Georgia State's 1-3 against the spread on the season. Old Dominion's 1-5. Georgia State is 5-0 and straight up in their last five home games, though. Shitty thing is, though, they're 5-12 and against the spread. Like, they, they, you know... 5 and 12 against the spread in their last 17 when they're playing Old Dominion. So the Monarchs, you know, they've had their they've had their number, but uh I, I you know, I think I think Georgia State they're just fucking better. It's, this is the battle of the uh battle of the average teams and Georgia State's just a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an average team than Old Dominion is. So I'm going to ride the Panthers at minus 2. They're also at home, which is going to give them an edge. As I stated, they're 5-0 in their last five games at home. We're going to keep swinging down here. A lot of fucking games on the board tonight. So the next game up. Tip-offs at 7 o'clock. UNLV running, Re uh, running Rebels. They're on the road at Cal Riverside. UNLV. The Rebels, they're laying five in this game. The over-under is 140. Now, UNLV hasn't fared too well on the road as of late. They actually fucking put up a pretty shitty game. They laid some bricks against Wichita State. Wednesday night, losing 56-50. to 50. But I look for them to bounce back. They're a better team this year. They're a better team. They're more of the running Rebels this year. They're going to be able to put some points up on Riverside. I don't think Riverside's going to be able to hang with them. Riverside is 9-1 in the last 10 at home, but I'm not really too worried about that. They play a pretty weak schedule. So I like the running Rebels at minus 5. The cover against Cal Riverside. The Tar Heels are in Texas to take on the Longhorns. A little classic NCAA match here. Classic one. I think we're going to see some points in this game. Tar Heels are laying seven. About 45 minutes ago, they're laying six. So if you like the Tar Heels, jump on them now. So Tar Heels are laying seven. Over under in this game is 152.5. I like the over 152 and a half. I think we're going to see some points from these kids today. We're going to see some points from these kids today. Total's gone over in four of Texas's last six games. Total's cashed in five of Texas's last six games and play in North Carolina. So I like these trends. Both teams can shoot. But both teams are athletic. Pretty sure it's on uh, ESPN. So the, the kids are going to be pumped. Texas, you know, they've had a cream puff schedule as of late. Haven't played anybody significant since Michigan. Since a 78-72 loss against Michigan a few weeks ago. North Carolina, on the other hand, they've played a pretty good schedule. Davidson, Maryland, Kansas State, Northwestern, Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa was the last road game and they actually lost. So, you know, that would concern me if I was a Tar Heels supporter. I almost want to take Texas looking be even better. Texas looked good at plus 6. They look better at plus 7. But I have the over 152 and a half. My last game on the college hard court. It's a late night game. Some late night action. 
UCLA, they're on the road in Gonzaga. Pretty big game. Pretty game. Pretty big game to end the, uh, the college day. I'll have my eye on this. I'll have my eye on the UFC fight tonight. Probably go out. I'll definitely be out somewhere. I got a few options. I got a few options on what to do tonight. A couple people have reached out. You can hit up a couple of establishments. Have some fun on a Saturday night. Watch some UFC. Watch some college basketball. Socialize. Talk to some people. You never know what happens on a Saturday night. Alright. So, Gonzaga's laying eight. The over-under is 146.5. I'm going to roll with the UCLA Bruins. They've been putting up some points lately. I like that in a road dog. Road dog that can put up some points. I like they can hang with them. Gonzaga, you know, sometimes they struggle to score. Gonzaga is 22-3 and straight up in their last 25 home games. But they're 0-4-1 ATS in their last five. Shitty thing is though, UCL, UCLA, they're 3-6 and six against the spread on the season, so they're not making people much money, but hopefully they can make us some money tonight. So I'll just recap those for you, because I just kind of flew through them pretty damn quick. Now I do have a play on the Frozen Pond, but I'll replay these UFC and uh, college, college picks real quick. So I'm, I'm on Jose Aldo, minus 125. We've seen a lot of money come on him lately. Conor McGregor's plus, sitting at plus 100 right now. But I'm on Jose Aldo tonight. I also have a parlay. Chris Weidman at minus 143. He's taking on Luke Rockhold. In the middleweight title fight. The co-main event. I'm going to parlay him up with Max Holloway. He's taking on Jeremy Stevens. I think he's going to make quick work. On the hard court. I got Marquette. I got the Golden Eagles at plus seven and a half. They're on the road in Wisconsin. I got Georgia State Panthers at minus one and a half. They're at home against Old Dominion. I think the total is going to go over 153. Sorry, 152 and a half now. That's what I just clicked on. North Carolina, Texas. I think UNLV running Rebels will make, make easy work. Of Cal Riverside, I got them at minus 5. UCLA, the Bruins, I think they're going to hang with Gonzaga tonight. Some good night in sports. I got them at plus 8. My final play of the day, I might have a few others, I might have a few others, but, you know, final play of the day is on the Frozen Pond. In the NHL, and as you know, if you've watched my podcast... I always like to keep an eye on what teams are going through the Florida swing. The Washington Capitals happen to be doing that right now. So, my theory is, with a lot of other handicappers, I like to put it in the drawer, so to speak, and I like to pull the drawer open every time I see a team on the Florida swing. Washington played Florida the other night and lost. I like Washington to win tonight. So basically, I like teams, I watch them, and I like to see what they do in that first game. Say they're playing Florida the first game. If they lose to Florida the first game, and they're playing Tampa Bay the next game, I'll bet on them to beat Tampa Bay. I'll lay the money on the team to beat Tampa Bay. If they roll into Florida, and they beat Florida, and they're rolling into Tampa Bay for the next game, I'll put my money on Tampa Bay to win. Very rarely does a team sweep the Florida swing, and very rarely do they uh, lose both games. Something about sitting on a beach that relaxes you. And something about sitting on a beach that kind of pumps you up to go play some hockey as well. So basically, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're minus 125 favorites. Washington Capitals are sitting at plus 105. Over-under in this game is five pucks. About 45 minutes to an hour ago, I laid the Washington Capitals at plus 110. And as I get towards the end of this, 
I'll just play a little bit of uh, a little bit of tunes to lead our way out here. I'll get you some info here on the Capital game. Just bear with me. But I got a little bit of music here for uh, for my for my boy Jose Aldo tonight. This is for you, Aldo. Get psyched up, bud. Get psyched up. Yo. In a hundred years from now, everyone who's living on this planet will be dead. So it's inconsequential. Capitals are seven and two. Their last nine games. Bullshit that you stand for. It's more important what you what you're ready to build. What you're Eight and two in the last ten when playing Tampa Bay. What you're ready to create. Better fucking remember that. Tampa Bay is 4-1 and one straight up for the last five at home, but I look for the Capitals to take it. It's going to be a close one, one goal game. And life is chaotic, the government is psychotically racist and robotic. The matrix of entrapment is socioeconomic. Neurotic conspiracy theory becomes reality. Life is war, and every day's a battle to me. I'm on the brink of insanity between extreme intelligence and split personalities. But I elevate to the point of reversing gravity. Revolutionary conceptuality spinning out of me. Even the dead people in my family tell me they proud of me. Stupidity's not allowed by me, because I don't got time to play. I'm the black hole lyricist that will take your shine away. Dark Darkness at any time of day. I'm the technique and you're nobody. So what you try to say? Stellar density becomes your physical alignment. 1.8 billion tons per square inch confinement. Yo, yo, yo. I drop knowledge so heavy it leaves the world unbalanced. Exterminate the spiritual force of all the challenge. I'm the Get pumped, Aldo. Get pumped. <laughs> Guys, see that speed night off the gun tonight, Aldo. On the planet. Yo, yo. <laughs> Lyrically, I'm infinite like possibilities, but you don't have the capability like infertility. Cause opening your mouth to question my validity is like trying to contradict the theory of relativity. What I spit is the epitome of heavy artillery. My enemy is the biggest hip hop like artist. And misery. Fan? Break out like father's but I like my rap. I like my hip hop. I'm a gangster rap fan. Like you know, I like my old school shit. My NWA, KRS One. Crackers from NSYNC, and I don't care about your link or it's your easy. I shed light with more magnitude than two pops to care. Right now, when I listen to hip hop, a more East Coast. A roach can live for nine days without its head, but you can't. Yo, it's a little yo, immortal yo. technique for you there, Aldo. Yeah, when I listen to hip hop, this is some gangster rap, more East Coast now. This is a lot of Jedi mind tricks, Army of the Pharaohs, and their crew. The moral technique like we we're just blasting here for Aldo. I'm explicit like video tapes of controversy. Outer space. Self-titled. I'll make your thoughts a victory. Get pessimistic with the quickness. If you think that I will just become another statistic with anything but success when I bless But I laid down a lot of picks here for you. I'm gonna catch the uh, Euro draw. United's about to kick off their match. It's probably my last play. I am on United to beat Burnmo. I think they, uh, I ripped the shit out of United the other day. They got an injury uh, riddled lineup. I haven't even uh, checked the uh, information on it too much, the updates. So I'm going to get on that as soon as I get off. Fantasy football playoffs kick off for most people this week, so good luck in that. And remember... If you're not laying the money down on the table, you're not winning.
Yeah, be free!